All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rechakwadash, the bonus to the elder apostles, Great Millstone, and salutation and much love to Yaakim out there pushing out this word of truth and sincerity. And uh, Shalom as well to the men, women, and children listening to the prophets of the Lord. <clears throat> and uh, pretty much, I just want to go into, uh, you know, how our salvation is an I, okay? The Lord returning. And bringing a great slaughter and at the same time bringing a great deliverance onto the, the elect of the children of Israel right? the one third beginning with the 144,000 men that, that will stand boldly for the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai alright and that salvation is coming but what we have to be able to endure unto the end alright so all these Christians talking about um, you know uh, oh, I've been saved because I accept the sweet Jesus in my heart well, they don't, they err not knowing the scriptures. All right. This is Mark 13, verse 13. It says, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So the one, the ones that, that stand for the Lord unto the end are be the, will be the ones to be saved. Okay. So you have to endure unto the end. Whatever that your end may be. If you have to die for the Lord, then so be it. But you endured to the end all right and the ones that are will endure which is going to be a lot greater than the ones that die all right as far as the end this truth all right it's because it's going to be a great deliverance all right those that endure unto the end all right at the while them, when the nuclear missiles are coming all right flying through the skies then the then the righteous shall be saved all right like the scriptures say the righteous shall scarcely be saved okay so let's let's get into these scriptures now <clears throat> All right, because this is how the Lord is about to bring salvation, man, through what people ignorantly call uh, UFOs. All right, the chariots of the Lord. This is uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 28. <clears throat> I'll, start at, uh, I'll start at 27, and I'll start at 26. Luke 21, verse 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on, on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. All right, so people are going to be having heart attacks when the Lord is on the uh, uh, on the way back, man. And even before that, because all the all the calamities, all the uh, all the horrible miseries that are taking place on the earth are going to have men dying from fear, man. And verse twenty seven says, "And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory." And you go into one of those words, I believe it's glory. It goes into uh, his host. So the Lord's coming in a cloud, aka a UFO. All right, and we can prove that in Psalms um, or a chariot. Uh, let me see. I think it's Psalms 103. Uh, let's see. Let me let me uh, do a quick search. I know it's in Psalms. Okay, it was, a, it was actually Psalms 104, verse 3. It says, Who laid the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariot? Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? All right, so the clouds are, are the chariots of the Lord. Okay, the one that walketh upon the wings of the wind, meaning they can fly. All right, so what the, the Lord is coming back on a cloud, but it's a chariot. All right, that's a so-called UFO. And it's going to be one humongous UFO. And they, they just, uh, uh, scientists just reported, or astronomers, whatever, reported uh, seeing a, 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 a chariot, or a UFO, as they call them, that's bigger than the, the size of Earth. So that's the fathership. That's the one the elect's going to be upon, all right, be beamed up into. And that's the one that Yahweh is returning in, all right? So it, it, back in Luke 21, verse uh, 27, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. All right, because the Lord, he's coming in with great power. He's not coming to meet you people as a man. He's coming in his glorious form. All right. And when he be, when he calls up his elect, his elect will be changed to be like him, be like as, as he is, you know. Verse uh, 28, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. So our redemption is going to come from where? Up, up in the clouds. Okay. 
Because it said the Lord's coming in the cloud. So why are we looking up? Because that's how, that's where our redemption is going to lie at. Our salvation it will will be seen from above. You know, so, you know, you know what I mean. Like the instruments of our salvation will be above. You know, that's why it says to look up, lift your heads up, for your redemption draweth nigh. All right, because the same way the Lord left is the same way He's coming back. And let's get that account in, in Acts chapter one. Okay, this is Acts one, and uh, I'll start at. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see here. Let's start at verse 9. Acts 1 and 9, it says, And when he had spoken these things, that he being Yahushai, and, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So again, the, the scriptures clearly tell you how the Lord... All right, left and how he's coming back, and it keeps mentioning clouds, which we, uh, pursuing the Psalms 104, those are chariots. All right, it says, verse 10, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up. So, what were the disciples doing? All right, they were looking up, they lifted up their heads, like in Luke 21 said, Lift up thy lift up your head, for you drink some draw night. Right? So, this is the, the same thing that we're going to be doing in those last days, waiting on the redemption, is what the, the elect. I mean, the, yeah, the the elect, of course, what the disciples were doing. All right. They were looking up. And then it said, verse 10 says, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which were angels. Verse 11, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh, which is taken up from you into heaven, so shall shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So the, the same manner he left in is the same manner he's coming back in, which was in the cloud. Okay? Plain and simple. And let's, let's get that in uh, Revelation. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 7. And it reads, Behold, he cometh with clouds. Right? Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so am I. So yeah, people going to be well. Like, yeah, a lot of people's hearts going to be failing them from fear when they when they behold the majesty of Yahweh Shai returning. All right. And every eye is going to see him because that, that, that fathership is going to be humongous. All right. And then you're going to see all the other uh, chariots piloted by the angels. All right. His, his, his fleet, so to say. The true air force, the air force of the Lord, okay, but but nonetheless, it says, "Behold, He cometh with clouds." All right, and again, going back that Psalms one hundred four, the clouds are the chariots of the Lord, okay, <clears throat> and again, the elect, the ones that endure unto the end, the ones that stand boldly for you, how about you, say They will meet the Lord in the air. They will be called up to meet Him. All right, they will be uh, received of Him. If you will, into the chariots, all right, into the clouds, all right, uh, to go into, uh, go into them chambers while the indignation pass over, you know, the earth. <clears throat> That's going to be the, this, the, the, the true, all right, exodus, okay, and it's going to be in great fashion, much more greater than the ancient Egypt, all right. So let's go to prove that we're going to be, Lord's will, be part of that number, that we're going to be called up into them ships. Uh, this is a Reve Revelation 11 and 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven. Right, who's coming in he from heaven? The heavens. Yahushua. Saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And their enemies beheld them. So our enemies are going to beheld us. All right. Go up into the clouds, man. Which, again, who's coming in a cloud? The chariot. Yahushua. So the ones that's, that, uh. You know, fight for the Lord. Guess what? The Lord's going to fight for you. All right. He's going to receive you up into the heavens. And your enemies, all right, all those that are, that come up against us, whether two thirds of, of our nation or these heathens, of mainly Esau. All right. They're going to watch us as we go up into them chariots, man. You know, they have different movies where people are getting beamed up uh, through tractor beams, as they call them. That's going to become a reality. All right, uh, what they call them, UFO invasion, an abduction. All right, that the, the elect will be abducted out of this wicked and sinful kingdom right before it's about to be destroyed.
All right. And where are they going to go? They're going to go to the cloud. And not the, not Esau's cloud. All right. They're going up to the heavens to meet the Lord. All right. Let's get uh, let's get that in uh, First Thessalonians. <clears throat> it's First Thessalonians chapter four. And I'll start at verse 16. Because remember, it said they're going to hear a, 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 a shout from heaven, right? Saying, come up hither. Well, this is it's going to be Yahweh Shai that says that. This is a 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. It says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of the Most High, and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, so, you know, the ones that have, uh, pursuing the verse 16, the ones that um, have died for the Lord, all right, have be became martyrs, which is, martyrs just means witness, all right? They, if they, they if you die for the testimony of Yahweh Shai, proclaiming his name and professing him, uh, uh, guess what? You're going to be with the Lord when he returns. And then the ones that remain, the ones that are enduring still, they're going to be called up to meet Yahweh Shai and the rest of the elect in the clouds. And we're going to meet them in the air, as it says. So we're going to be called up, literally. And, it, and then we're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And then we're going to be with the Lord forever. All right? And that that will be the beginning of the kingdom of Yahweh Shim Yahweh Shai being established. Which now is being prepared. All right? Because the, the kingdom is in with is, is within us. But the physical manifestation will begin when Yahweh Shai returns and, and, and redeems his elect. All right. So we'll end it off on this. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labor. So who are those? The ones that afflicted us and made no account of our labors. That's the two-thirds of our people and the heathen. Okay? Because remember in, uh, in Revelation 11 and 12, it said that our, our the enemies beheld them. So those are going to be the ones to behold us, the ones that afflicted us. And yes, two-thirds of our people did afflict us. All right? They killed the prophets. They betrayed the Lord. Now it's time for them to pay. While we receive salvation, they will receive destruction and death. All right, but they're gonna be they're, they're gonna be good when they come back in the kingdom of heaven. Verse two, when they sh wisdom of Solomon five and two, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear, and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation, so far beyond all that they look for. So, our salvation is, is gonna be a strange one, because if you've never come across these videos before, you're gonna think we're crazy talking about we're going to be saved by ufos but that's what the bible says and people aren't looking for that kind of salvation they, they i don't know what they're looking for but they, these people don't know what the day of the lord is about and they don't know how salvation is going to come about a lot of people that claim to be christians think they're already saved so this is it's going to be a strange a, a strange salvation that they're going to behold <clears throat> verse three and they re, and they repent Repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and proverb of reproach. All right, so pretty much that was the point, you know, the strangeness of the salvation. So, you know, hey, our salvation is, is at hand and it's going to be a strange one, but it will happen. Shalom.